Researchers are investigating new ways to detect mental health problems through AI-powered apps. Models are collecting data on people's behavior that could help determine shifts in mood in new ways. For more insight on this, Dr. Nicholas Jacobson joins us now. He's an assistant professor in the Departments of Biomedical Data Science and Psychiatry at Dartmouth and directs an AI and mental health lab. Mm. Okay, so doctor, you co-created an app called Mood Capture. How does mm -hmm. it work and what have you learned? And I might be scared. So <laughs> help me, talk me off the ledge. <laughs> this is, well, right, this sure. is what he does. This is what you do. Pick up your phone, quick. That is, that is <laughs> what I do. Okay, um, so let me back up and, and talk a little bit about our goals. Um, so uh, we use AI and data captured through smartphones and wearable sensors to try to predict the severity and course of mental health. A lot of what we're trying to do is really in developing things called like mood capture and mood triggers uh, which is another application that's developed at Dartmouth, is to try to ensure that we are potentially intervening in the moments of greatest need and um, times that are timely and really delivering the precise mental health interventions that folks might benefit from. So we're trying to develop the science surrounding that. Um, the apps operate discreetly and in the background. They gather this data continuously. Um, the types of data that we gather are things like physical activity, heart rate, breathing rates, our sleep patterns, our social interactions, and really you know, even things that you're, you're mentioning there, we capture spontaneous selfies as they interact with their phones. Hmm. In terms of how this data can be used, I think it's really one of the things that uh, we've seen in a, 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 across a number of studies now is that we can actually predict mental health quite well through all of this really intensive data and really the purpose of it is not to just monitor folks continuously in a big brother way, it's to try to actually put power back into their hands using uh, data that's really from their daily lives and informs um, their, their mental health needs. So I'm sort of a gadget girl and I love anything that collects data about myself. I don't, maybe I'm too, I don't know, that, that may be another mental health She's problem. like the, 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 but, yeah. So one of the gadgets that I wear all the time does, you know, keep track of my temperature and my sleep and my movement and this and that. And I found it really interesting when I got COVID, uh -huh. it asked me a few days in, was I sick or was something else going on with me because it had detected my lack of movement and my temperature change. And I thought something like this could easily be modified to include mental health data. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think that's just right. And one of the things that if you were to enter a hospital and you talk to folks that are depressed, one of the things that's pretty striking is actually how slow they often present. Mm. They actually move more slowly than, um, than most of us. And folks, folks, when we're anxious, you'll often tap your foot, get a little restless, those things can all also be gathered through these small movements that are happening um, through these devices that are physically attached to us. Um, so yeah, I, I think your intuitions there about how uh, we can actually understand mental health um, can be in much more intricate ways through these types of data capture. And when we pair that with these types of models that AI can provide to us, so it can give us a lot more indicators of where our mental health uh, is really shifting in more fine-grained ways than the field has ever had access to. Before. So doctor, before we let you go, and, and if I can ask you to just uh, sum up in just like a minute, but like, so aside from my fear of the government or yeah. somebody using this information <laughs> for nefarious purposes, huh? can you envision a world where AI becomes your psychiatrist? In other words, you are not only uh, learning that you have, the, the, the device may not only learn that you have mental health issues, but can also provide the outlet for by which you would get better. Yeah, I think the future is now. We're doing that type of work and uh, trying to essentially uh, giving folks access to always on care through this AI. In a lot of ways, I think it's uh, it's in some ways a very big improvement over the care system where you'd interact with somebody once a week maybe um, it's always available and always on and can provide gold standard care. Um, so I think the, there's there's a lot of room for this kind of work to be developed and um, but it's very promising in terms of increasing access and availability of, of really empirically sound care.
I think having a pocket shrink or like a pocket psychiatrist that, you know, whenever you need some advice and guidance right there. I feel like you'd be bothering that thing way too much. <laughs> way too much. Uh, Dr. Nicholas Jacobs, I know him. Dr. Nicholas Jacobson, thank you so much. Thanks, <laughs>